1951, Sydney was committed to the Korean conflict. The fledgling RAN fleet air arm was to learn its skills in the hardest school of all, war. We did do a great deal of flying. We had uh, four squadrons on board. Uh, it was when we did the cruise, uh, and uh, the, the ship was covered in snow and ice, and uh, I understand that if you went in the water there, well, none of us did, that you only had four or five minutes before you were close to death. As I say, we flew hard, but you flew hard for short periods. Landing an aircraft on Sydney with her straight deck was a hazardous business. You couldn't see very much for two reasons. First of all, it had a great big long nose and a propeller disc going in front of you. And um, in fact, you could hardly see the ship at all uh, on your final approach. And so you, just like a World War I fellow, you put your goggles down over your eyes and leaned out in the slipstream and uh, you could see the batsman. And the batsman gave you the instructions until the very last second and then you could see the deck. If there was any sort of sea running, uh, the back end of the deck could be going up and down 30, 40 feet. But because that's where the batsman could help you. You tried to ignore that when you saw it at the last minute. He got the feel of uh, when the ship was going to steady for a while and then hopefully it cut you at the right moment and you came on. Well, it wasn't exactly frightening. Exciting is close to the word. In those days with the straight deck, uh, which the early ships were, and the Sydney, of course, was a straight deck, uh, you had to have these great big barriers up in front to prevent uh, a fellow who missed the wires with his hook uh, running into the aircraft that were already landed on, tucked up forward. So if you missed the wires, you went into the fence and it was fairly uh, damaged the aircraft, expensive noises, but very rarely the uh, pilot got hurt. And of course, there was the odd fellow who, uh, who went over the side, uh, caught a wire and went over the side, and sometimes even hit the back end of the ship before he got on. I can't remember what the accident rate was, but at one stage it was pretty horrific. I think something like one in ten landings was an accident of some sort. I was often asked how I got bald at a fairly young age, and, uh, and the answer was quite simple. I said I lost one hair for every deck landing I did, but six for every one I watched. Because <laughs> they were uh, far worse to watch than they were to do, I think. At Sydney, the ship's company gets planes ready on deck, sending them up by lift and preparing them for a speedy takeoff. They're ready for offense or defense. The exercises are planned to take place over an area of 50,000 square miles of sea. A vast area to be covered, but highly trained pilots know how to conduct a systemized search that thing to chance. More and more sea furies come up from the hangars, planes expertly maintained and serviced by skilled, well-trained mechanics. Shorter run is needed, and how fast the aircraft handlers work in getting the next plane ready. The initial acceleration provided by the catapult subjects the pilots and observers to a force four times that of gravity. Pilots have achieved a remarkably high degree of efficiency. And no matter how many times you see it, there's still something fascinating in the way experienced pilots put their plane down on the flight deck. Something fascinating too in the way the batsman guides them in. 